our brain is a fascinating organ. The high adaptability of our nervous system means that the human body can remain relatively resilient in extreme environments such as in very low temperatures. Although many people can withstand cold temperatures for a short while, prolonged exposure can lead to hypothermia and to serious injury. However, in this video, we will discuss the extraordinary case of Wim Hof, whose ability to regulate his own autonomic nervous system allows him to withstand extremely cold temperatures for long periods without negative consequences. This ability gave Wim Hof the nickname the Iceman. He developed a method known as the Wim Hof Method, which consists of deep and forceful breathing, deliberate cold exposure, as well as mindful body awareness. Altogether, these actions are thought to affect the autonomic nervous system and thus, among other things, the regulation of body temperature. In other words, whereas the normal response in the body is to cool down to preserve energy, the Wim Hof method can result in the body keeping its temperature at a higher value. Wim Hof, who himself actively engages in his own method, advocates for the positive effects his method has on our body such as a boost of the immune system, increased energy levels, as well as a reduction of physical pain. While all of these effects are worth discussing, in this video we will focus on a study conducted by Muzik and colleagues in 2018. This study investigated the effect of the Wim Hof method as performed by Wim Hof himself on brain activation. To do this, the experimenters invited Wim Hof to the lab and had him participate in a functional magnetic resonance imaging study. Functional magnetic resonance imaging, also known as fMRI, measures brain activity by estimating the amount of oxygen that goes to different brain regions. On the first two days of the experiment, the Iceman underwent an fMRI paradigm consisting of an oscillating whole body temperature challenge designed to generate periods of mild hypothermia mixed in with periods of return to basal core body temperature. In other words, while undergoing an fMRI paradigm, Hoff underwent intermittent periods of changing temperature going from his core temperature to cold temperature. Specifically, while Hoff was placed in an MR scanner, temperature-controlled water was infused into specially designed whole-body garments that Hoff was wearing. In the beginning of the experiment, neutral temperature water was infused into the garments and this water had a temperature that was within the range of the normal core body temperature. After 5 minutes, cold water of about 15 degrees Celsius was instead now infused into the garment, generating mild hypothermia. This was repeated every 5 minutes until the end of the experiment, which lasted 25 minutes in total. While Hoff performed the same fMRI paradigm on both days, the two sessions differed in one important way. On the first day, Hoff underwent the paradigm in a passive manner, but on the second day, he actively used the breathing and mindfulness techniques that he advocates as part of his Wim Hof method. In addition to this, 20 healthy control participants were also invited to undergo a similar procedure as Wim Hof. However, these healthy controls only participated in the passive condition without using the Wim Hof method. The results of this study show some very interesting findings. Firstly, when measuring the skin temperature, as can be seen in this figure, both the control participants, indicated by the blue circles, and the Iceman during the passive state, indicated by the red open circles, show dynamic changes in their skin temperature in response to the cold and neutral water temperature. Specifically, as the temperature of water got colder, the skin temperature dropped on average about 2 degrees Celsius. As the temperature of the water was neutral, the skin temperature would return back to normal. These results reflect high rates of skin temperature change in response to the stimulus. However, interestingly, when Hoff performed his breathing and mindfulness techniques, as can be seen in the red line with the red full circles, the same fluctuation in skin temperature was not seen. Thus, Hoff was able to maintain his skin temperature throughout the mild hypothermia for 25 minutes. In terms of the neuroimaging findings, there were two main results. Firstly, the researchers found a significant increase in bolt signal in the periaqueductal gray area in Hoff when it was exposed to cold water temperature as compared to the control group. This increase in bolt signal was also shown in the pons. The periaqueductal gray area is involved in autonomic responses in the body and play a key role in pain regulation. This finding suggests that by engaging in Wim Hof's techniques during cold exposure allows him to activate primary control centers for descending pain or cold stimuli modulation in the periaqueductal gray area. 
This could possibly reflect a stress-induced analgesic. In addition to this increase in bolt signal in the periaqueductal gray area, the researchers also found a significant decrease in bolt signal in the left anterior insula and the right middle insula in Huff when he was exposed to cold water temperature as compared to the control group. These results suggest that the Wim Hof technique engages these higher order cortical areas which are associated with self-reflection and facilitate internal focus and sustained attention in the presence of aversive, in this case called, external stimuli. While all of these findings may suggest the efficacy of the Wim Hof method in self-modulating one's thermoregulation, there are some limitations of the study that are worth mentioning. First of all, it should be kept in mind that fMRI measures blood oxygenation in the brain. Thus, a comparison of conditions that include normal and heavy breathing will result in different activity patterns as in the heavy breathing condition, more oxygen flows to the brain. Furthermore, the periaqueductal gray area has been associated with the control of breathing. So the increased activity of that region could reflect a difference in breathing patterns rather than a change in autonomic functioning. Finally, it should also be noted that the control subjects did not perform the Wim Hof method. We therefore cannot make a full conclusion about just how extraordinary Wim Hof's brain really is. Nevertheless, given the positive effects that the Wim Hof method has had on millions of people, it warrants further investigation and a systematic analysis in a large study sample. Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video.